Hey, it's Heidi Hope with New England Photo Collective and Photographer Rising. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about bird's eye compositions. And you'll be learning a little ceiling tripod hack. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and show us your results in the comments below. So a tripod is just something that holds our camera and for a bird's eye composition we need our camera to be directly above us. A composition of a photograph is just the way the elements of the scene are made up and a lot of factors go into that. In some situations you can arrange the elements of your photograph yourself. That's what we're going to be doing today. In other situations, like if you are taking pictures of action sports or a landscape, let's say, you may not be able to move around the elements of your scene, but you are able to move yourself around. And where you take the picture from also makes a difference on the final composition. Think about this. If you're standing way up tall and taking a picture up here, what's going to be in the actual final picture is going to be really different than let's say if you get way down on the ground and you take a picture from down there. In a bird's eye composition, the photo is taken directly above the subject. It would be what a bird would see flying up above. Bird's eye compositions are really popular now, especially with cell phone photography. And a cell phone has a pretty wide angle of view, meaning it can take in a lot of the scene, as long as you position the cell phone far enough away from whatever your subject is. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite Instagram artists as inspiration for creating bird's eye compositions that illustrate a story. Now for this lesson you can illustrate any story that you want to. You can create any scene that you want to create. And since we're recording this during the coronavirus quarantine, most of us are in our homes and we don't really have anywhere to go, we can actually use photography to create a magical world of our imaginations. So where do you want to go? Do you want to go to the beach? Do you want to illustrate the scene from one of your favorite storybooks? Do you want to show off some of the things that you've been doing around the house? You can illustrate any story that you want to tell. Have fun with it. So let's take a look at one of my favorite Instagram artists who does an amazing job with these bird's eye compositions. I know her work will inspire you. One of my favorite accounts to follow is Sienna and I on Instagram. This is a really creative artist who does a lot of work with bird's eye compositions. If you go all the way back to the early days of this artist on Instagram, you can actually see how she began with just posing her baby um, while the baby was sleeping and taking a photo from very high above, directly above the subject to create a bird's eye composition. Then she starts getting creative with laying out the stuffed animals in a pattern to create an interesting composition. And she begins storytelling a little bit more by adding different elements in. Now she's adding flowers, here we are with the stuffed animals again. So it started with these really simple compositions and then got more and more magical over time. Here's a picture where she is also in it. So the phone has to be really far away from the subject to be able to get the whole length in the composition like this. So it looks like they appear to be on the floor, on a rug or a quilt or something, um, and she lays out the composition and then she has to attach the phone way up high on the ceiling or have somebody else take it from way up high to get this directly above composition. If you're off to one side or you're leaning over and you're not directly above, you're not going to get as cool of a final outcome as if the phone is directly above where the subject is. Here she's starting to get more creative. She's adding in, these are some elements that are added in post-processing, um, which Color Story is actually a really good app for adding in light elements like this. You can find Color Story right in the App Store. Here's another really cute one, making it look like um, snow angels with the teddy bear. As time goes by, her stories start to get even more detailed. Now she's adding many more elements in. Some of these are in post-processing, but most of them aren't. Most of them are items that can be found around the house, and they're being arranged into a composition to tell a particular story. I love this one. It actually, they used fabric to create an egg shape and it looks like um, she's inside an egg by overlapping the fabric over her. 
Here's a really beautifully illustrated scene. Again, these are all fabric and household materials, but they're just laid in a position to make it look like a landscape, like they're going somewhere. Notice how she layers different colors um, and different textures together to get a really detailed scene. The more detail the, that you add into these, really the cooler they look in the end. Here it looks like she's walking out of a room with, uh, she's holding this little teddy bear in the back here and even the way her scarf is kind of pushed over her shoulder here makes it look like the wind is blowing the scarf over her shoulder and the curtain here is also blowing over to the left hand side so it really gives a feeling of movement to the image. Another great illustration and there are a lot of details here um, that are cut out on either out of, they almost look like skewers I can't tell from far away, but they look like skewers and toothpicks to create cactuses, so I thought that was really creative. I love this one, how creative. She created a bike um, just using some material in a circular shape here and pulling the string out to make it look like the spokes of the wheels. This is a fun bird's eye composition. So you'll notice how things are placed a little bit differently. Um, these boxes aren't stacked up in the way they normally would be. They're stacked with the bows facing out because that looks better for the composition. And um, the mom and the daughter are both laying down, but they appear to be standing up in the composition. Fabric, it looks like a rug here was used to create the house. And all of these little dolls, everything is posed just so. I even love the element of the holiday lights that's been added in here. Her seasonal photos are some of my favorites. This is a really cute composition here. This is a scene mostly illustrated with cardboard here. Um, there's a little bit of light added in post-production in the editing program, but most of these shapes are just cut out of cardboard and um, drawn on. So this is definitely something everybody could achieve with stuff that's laying around the house. illustrate our scene. The kids chose to do a candy land kind of scene. So we found, um, first we took a big sheet for the background. You might want to pick a color scheme too, to kind of stick to certain colors. So we chose turquoise and blues and pinks mainly to work with here. So we found this light teal colored sheet um, and then we found other pieces of cloth and clothing around the house. You'll notice in a lot of the inspiration compositions that I showed you that the artist took fabric and just shaped the fabric into different items. So if she wanted a tree in the composition, she would take fabric and shape it into the shape of a tree. So we need to make all these different candy shapes. Um, we have some clear plastic or acrylic bowls um, from the kitchen that are gonna be pieces of candy. We laid our sheet down as our background so that we have a nice, clean, colored back, solid colored background. And then we're adding these different elements on top of it. Now, if you have something that you don't have a good shape for around the house, you can always cut the shape out of paper. We did that for our candy wrappers. And then once we get the scene all set up the way that we want it to be, we are going to, there's two ways you can take the photo. If you have somebody that can help you take the photo, they could stand on something tall, like a stool or a ladder. Please be careful if you're getting up onto something high to take a picture that you don't fall. Um, but you're, you can, they can stand really high. The goal is to try to get the camera directly above the subject. You want it straight up and down from the subject so that the subject isn't tilted in the composition. That's the goal. Now, if you're doing this on your own or you don't have somebody who's tall enough to get directly above you, there's actually a tripod hack. So a tripod is just something that holds your camera steady. So we can actually create a little tripod on our ceiling just using cardboard, tape, scissors, um, and our phones. So you just need to cut a strip of cardboard and then you're going to bend it into a little phone holder. So you're gonna bend it this way and this way. That way we tape the two sides here to the ceiling and the phone can be cradled right in the middle.
Don't forget to share your results using the hashtag NEPC challenge. Also, I'd be honored if you gave us a thumbs up by clicking below. You can leave a comment in the comment section and don't forget to share this with your friends who would love to learn about photography.